In 1518, a woman began dancing on the streets of Strasbourg for seemingly no reason. She was soon joined by others, all dancing non-stop, day and night. The dancing started to spread across the city, and eventually the dancers began to die. This event became known as the Dancing Plague. So what caused it, and what was the cure? In July 1518, a woman known as Mrs. Trophia began to dance in a street in Strasbourg. This is fairly odd, as she didn't have any partners or even any music. People thought this was great at first, and you have to remember, times were pretty grim back then. Entertainment was scarce. There was no cukeser on the scene uploading videos, so they had absolutely nothing to look forward to in their lives. What was even more odd was that Mrs. Trophia didn't stop. She danced all through the day and all through the night, and this went on for about six days. Within a week, 34 others were dancing with her, and within the month, she had 400 of the feckers with their feet on the street. The dancers were predominantly female, which, uh, women. As funny as it sounds, dancing so rigorously actually puts tremendous strain on the body, with historians saying that even a modern day marathon runner wouldn't have had the stamina to keep up with these people hundreds of years ago. As such, many died from heart attacks, strokes, exhaustion. It's even believed at one point the Dancing Plague killed about 15 people a day. Nowadays you can't even have one person dying without the party coming to a stop. I've been uninvited from funerals for this very reason. A shocking injustice. The problem got so bad, it even drew the attention of the noble class, who aren't particularly well known for giving two shits about issues concerning peasants, so it must have been pretty bad. Some nobles sought out the advice of local physicians, although calling these guys physicians is being fairly generous. That time's medical understanding was only slightly more advanced than at space exploration. In a very rare display of common sense, the physicians ruled out astrological and supernatural causes, instead ruling that the plague was a natural disease. This moment of lucidity would not last as they then went on to claim it was caused by hot blood. You see, back then doctors operated under a system of medicine known as humorism, where it is posited that the body consists of four fluids or humors. Black bile, yellow bile, phlegm, and blood. Hmm. These humours had to remain in proper balance to maintain health. Normally, a diagnosis relating to your blood would lead to a prescription of bloodletting, where excess blood would be drained from your body to retain balance of the four humours. However, in this case, they just recommended more dancing. It's, it's honestly hard to say which of those two is the better option. So the problem is dancing, and the solution is also dancing. To this effect, halls and markets were opened for the space, and a wooden stage was erected. The authorities even paid for musicians to encourage the dancing. Not really sure what the logic behind this was. I mean, people were already dancing. They were dancing until they died. That was kind of the whole problem. So what exactly does this solve? Obviously, this solution was a big disaster and it only caused more people to join in. But eventually, the dancing just stopped for seemingly no reason. So hey, maybe there is something to this old-timey medicine. So what caused the dancing plague? Well, nobody knows. It's unexplained. It's actually a complete mystery. And it's not even the only time this happened either. The dancing plague broke out many times across mainland Europe between the 14th and the 17th century. Theories include food poisoning caused by fungus that grows on wheat. This same fungus has psychoactive properties and was actually used to synthesize the first LSD, so there you go. Some people believe it could have been caused by epilepsy and typhus. It's also believed it was a purely social phenomenon, like a form of mass hysteria caused by the stress of living in such miserable conditions. Superstition and religion could have also played a part, maybe. But I personally believe that the fact it was predominantly women is a serious line of research. Women are always up to some weird shite. They'll pluck out their eyebrows just to draw them back on. And here, uh, listen to this. I just learned this a while ago, right? Apparently it's popular now to tattoo your eyelids just so that you don't have to put on eyeliner every day. Isn't that fucking mad, hey? Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, uh, please consider subscribing and I'll put out more. I've been away for a while there because, um... 
but she's doing my last year of college so uh it's just been busy hopefully i'll start having the videos coming out um more frequently now when i find a job i have a few different ideas for you know different types of videos different formats different uh series maybe but uh, certainly tales from the bottle will still be the main uh line of videos from this channel so if you're worried about that don't worry it's not going anywhere so we just hit 1,000 subscribers recently, which is mad because when I put up the last video, I think we only had like 200. So I think from what I'm going to do from now on is I'm going to put like a, a sub count and a view count down uh, at the end of every video so that uh, we can track the progress of the channel from video to video. I may uh, fucking do something as well to celebrate the 1,000 subs. I was thinking of doing maybe like a questions and answers thing where you uh, send me questions about the channel or about me or whatever. And I'll answer them. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, if you're interested in that kind of thing, let me know down in the comments. If you're not interested, you can tell me to fuck off. <laughs> Alright guys, stay safe. And it's not even the only time this happened either. The Dancing Plague broke out many times across mainland Europe. <clears throat> fuck me. Jesus.